everyone. Just checking in. I hope everyone's doing well. I would like to encourage you to visit our website at Mindset Matters Podcast One. Dot com. Um, there you'll find a link to the blog that has pictures that go with each episode. You'll find each episode and you'll find um, ways to interact, including a way to leave your email for newsletters or a voicemail that could be played on a future episode. So I hope you'll take advantage of that. Um, I hope you give this episode a chance. Um, please don't think it's not interesting because it's about um, firefighters. I actually learned quite a few new things um, in researching for this and um, really kind of have more of a heart for firefighters and what they deal with and um, on, at a, on an emotional level as well as physical. Um, and we have a clip at the end that, that speaks to that. So I hope you'll give this episode a chance. Get ready to be inspired as we delve into the courageous world of firefighters in this heart-pounding episode. From battling fierce flames to providing life-saving aid, join us as we uncover the hero heart that beats within every firefighter. It's not just about the gear and sirens, it's the untold stories of valor, resilience, and sacrifice that define these true modern-day heroes. Welcome to Mindset Matters, The Courage to Continue, the podcast where we explore the extraordinary lives of ordinary individuals who have overcome immense challenges and emerged as beacons of inspiration. I'm your host, Lisa Sinclair, and today we embark on a remarkable journey into the lives of a profession. This is episode 22, The Courage to be Selfless in the Face of Danger, The Hero Heart of firefighters. Throughout history, the battle against blazes has been as old as the valuables people sought to protect. However, the roots of organized professionals taking on structural fires can be traced back to ancient Egypt. The Roman Republic also held its own version of firefighters, but these groups resembled private enterprises more than public services. It wasn't until the era of the Principate, under the visionary leadership of Augustus, that firefighting underwent a revolutionary transformation. Augustus called for the establishment of a state-funded, trained, and paid fire guard, marking the birth of the first truly public and professional firefighting service. This pioneering force, known as the Vigiles, operated in cohorts, serving not only as firefighters, but also as a night watch and city police force. The pages of history were rewritten as firefighting evolved from a private venture into a vital public service. In the tale of American history, the first chapters on fire departments were penned by volunteers, with the leading role played by the spirited volunteer fire company in New Amsterdam, the bustling metropolis we now call New York. These were not just haphazard groups. They were bands of community heroes who willingly offered their time to safeguard their neighbors and homes from the unpredictable dance of flames. As the clock of progress ticked on and new towns sprouted across the landscape, the plot thickened with a dramatic surge in the formation of volunteer fire departments. Each chapter unfolded with the fervor of citizens uniting to face the challenges of fire and protect the tapestry of their evolving communities. Back in the year of 1853, a groundbreaking event unfolded in Cincinnati, Ohio, the birth of the first-ever career fire department in the United States. This historic blaze-taming institution marked the dawn of a new era, setting the stage for the St. Louis Fire Department, which followed suit just four years later. As large cities across the nation started to pen a different chapter in firefighting history, recognizing the need to face the growing challenge of call volumes, these urban hubs boldly stepped onto the stage, establishing paid, full-time fire departments. Enter municipal fire departments, pirouetting in a different fiscal ballet. Unlike their city counterparts, 
These firefighting maestros don't share budgetary limelight with any other service. They stand as a private entity within their jurisdiction, tapping into their exclusive well of taxes to fuel their budgetary needs. It's not just about the money, it's about who holds the reins. City fire departments take their cues from the mayor, answering to the city's helmsman. Meanwhile, the municipal counterparts twirl in a different rhythm, beholden to elected board officials. This diverse dance of accountability orchestrates the harmonious operation of the department, directed not only by the chief officers, but also by the elected custodians of civic safety. The firefighting force, alternatively referred to as the fire brigade or fire department in certain regions, stands as one of the primary triumvirates in emergency services. Whether in bustling cityscapes or on the decks of maritime vessels, firefighters have established a pervasive presence across the globe. The competencies necessary for conducting operations safely undergo frequent rehearsal through assessments during a firefighter's professional journey. Typically, foundational firefighting skills are imparted through sanctioned fire academies or approved training courses at the local, regional, or state level. Furthermore, based on departmental prerequisites, additional proficiencies and certifications may be attained during this phase. Firefighters collaborate closely with various emergency response entities, including the police and emergency medical services. The responsibilities of firefighters often intersect with both of these counterparts. Those specializing in fire investigation, such as fire investigators or fire marshals, delve into determining the origin of a fire. In cases where the fire results from arson or negligence, their duties may intertwine with those of law enforcement. Additionally, firefighters may extend their services to include a certain level of emergency medical assistance. There are different types of firefighters. There are wildland firefighters. They address wildfires commonly referred to as bushfires in Australia, and they demand distinctive strategies and tactics. In numerous nations like Australia and the United States, the responsibility for these tasks often falls on the shoulders of local volunteer firefighters. Recognizing the ecological significance of wildfires, which can foster the growth of new plants, there are instances where they may be intentionally allowed to burn. The primary objective in combating wildfires encompass site safeguarding lives, preventing property loss, and mitigating ecological harm. Another type of firefighting is aircraft rescue. Specialized firefighters are integral to airport operations, equipped to handle potential ground emergencies. Given the high stakes of an aviation crisis, the prompt arrival of emergency response equipment and personnel is crucial. Airport firefighters are entrusted with swiftly securing the aircraft, its crew, and passengers from all potential hazards, with a particular focus on fire. These firefighters undergo advanced training in the application of firefighting foams, dry chemical agents, and clean agents designed to extinguish burning aviation fuel. Another type of firefighter is a rescue firefighter. They are tasked with extracting individuals from confined or perilous scenarios, ranging from burning structures to crashed vehicles. Handling intricate and rare situations, like rescues from collapsed buildings or confined spaces, necessitates specialized training and equipment. Notably, several fire departments, including a majority in the United Kingdom, adopted the title Fire and Rescue Service to encompass the broader mission. Larger fire departments, such as the New York City Fire Department and the London Fire Brigade, maintain specialized teams for advanced technical rescues. As the incidence of structure fires dwindles over the years in developed nations like the United States, non-fire rescues increasingly constitute a significant portion of firefighter responsibilities. This leads to another branch called Emergency Medical Services. Firefighters frequently offer varying levels of emergency medical care, 
In some regions, firefighters possess only first aid training, and medical calls fall under the exclusive purview of a separate emergency medical system. Conversely, in other areas, it is common for firefighters to be dispatched to handle medical emergencies. This shift is driven by the increasing demand for medical assistance and a notable reduction in fire incidents. In these departments, firefighters often hold certifications as emergency medical technicians to provide basic life support. In rarer cases, they may also be certified as paramedics to administer advanced life support. The United Kingdom, where fire services and EMS operate independently, has more recently introduced fire service co-responding. Another variable is whether firefighters respond using a fire engine or a designated response car. Another branch of firefighting includes hazardous materials. Fire departments typically take the lead in responding to hazardous materials incidents. Specialized firefighters designated as hazardous materials technicians undergo training in chemical identification, leak and spill control, and decontamination procedures. While firefighters typically handle hazardous materials, the task comes with significant risks. Flame retardants, chemical products employed to impede or halt the progression of wildfires by diminishing their intensity, play a crucial role. This is often achieved through chemical reactions that delay combustion or decrease the flammability of substances fueling the fire. Flame retardants are prevalent in fire extinguishers, surface coatings, forest fighting retardants, and textiles. Despite the considerable advantages in curbing major fires, it's essential to note that the components constituting these substances can be highly harmful. Other firefighters may specialize in fire prevention. Fire departments regularly offer guidance to the public on preventing fires in both residential and workplace settings. Fire inspectors or fire marshals play a direct role in inspecting businesses to verify compliance with existing building fire codes, which are implemented to ensure that structures can effectively withstand fire spread, identify potential hazards, and guarantee the safe evacuation of occupants in line with the associated risks. Alternative approaches to fire prevention involve proactively addressing recognized hazardous conditions and averting perilous actions before they lead to tragic outcomes. This is often achieved through innovative means such as delivering presentations, disseminating safety brochures, publishing news articles, creating public safety announcements, or setting up impactful displays in frequented locations. A paramount focus of public education efforts for most fire prevention teams across various fire departments is to ensure that each household possesses functional smoke alarms, is well-versed in proper fire safety techniques, and is equipped with evacuation routes and rendezvous points. The profession of firefighting has unique occupational health and safety risks. The first is fire itself. To safeguard against the inherent dangers of firefighting, firefighters constantly carry protective gear and self-rescue equipment. A self-contained breathing apparatus is utilized to deliver air to the firefighter through a full face mask, offering protection against smoke inhalation, toxic fumes, and superheated gases. Additionally, a specialized device known as a personal alert safety system is commonly worn independently or integrated into the SCBA. The PASS device is designed to alert others when a firefighter remains stationary for a specific duration or manually activates the device. The sounding alarm from the PASS device aids other firefighters, such as a firefighter assist and search team or rapid intervention team, it helps them to locate the distressed firefighter. Heat injury poses a significant concern for firefighters given their use of insulated clothing that impedes the dissipation of heat generated during physical exertion. The timely identification of heat-related problems is crucial to prevent dehydration and the progression of heat stress into a fatal condition. The early onset of heat stress can impact cognitive function, and when coupled with the challenges of operating in hazardous environments, monitoring heat stress and dehydration becomes a critical matter. 
Firefighters face a potential risk of developing rhabdomyolysis, a condition characterized by the breakdown of muscle tissue. Various factors contribute to rhabdomyolysis, including exposure to heat, elevated core body temperature, and prolonged intense physical exertion. Routine tasks performed by firefighters, such as carrying additional equipment weight and working in hot environments, can heighten their susceptibility to rhabdomyolysis. Another occupational safety risk for firefighters is structural collapses. Structural collapses represent a significant risk during firefighting, often resulting in fatalities. These collapses, involving elements like walls, floors, ceilings, roofs, or truss systems, can occur suddenly and may lead to firefighters being crushed or trapped inside the building. To prevent loss of life, it is imperative that all on-duty firefighters establish two-way communication with the incident commander. Additionally, they should be equipped with a personal alert safety system device, or the PASS that we talked about, on all fire scenes and maintain radio communication during all incidents. This establishment and advancement of this aspect of firefighter safety can be attributed to Francis Brannigan. The next two occupational hazards were surprising to me. The first is traffic collisions. Traffic collisions account for 25% of firefighter fatalities in the United States, occurring while responding to or returning from incidents. In addition, other firefighters have faced injuries or fatalities due to vehicles at the scene of a fire or emergency. To, amid, to mitigate this risk, many fire departments have implemented a precautionary measure mandating firefighters to wear a highly visible bright yellow reflective vest over their turnout coats when working on public roads. This enhances visibility to passing drivers and helps prevent accidents. The next safety hazard was surprising to me. It's workplace violence. Instances of violence against firefighters have been reported during their response to calls with occasional assaults by members of the public. Such attacks can instill fear for their safety, potentially diverting their attention from the situation at hand and increasing the risk of injury to themselves or the individuals they are assisting. Workplace violence encompasses both mental and physical abuse encountered during on-duty services. First responders are particularly susceptible to this form of that violence, with EMS reporting a percentage range of 53 to 90 percent of calls involving instances of workplace violence. This type of violence significantly contributes to burnout and depression among first responders. While EMS professionals regularly interact with people, approximately 18% of firefighters experience PTSD due to workplace violence, and 60% have encountered at least one call where they felt their life was in jeopardy or questioned their own safety. Choosing the profession of firefighting means contemplating the long-term risks. The first long-term risk of becoming a firefighter is cardiovascular disease. It has long been linked to the firefighting profession. In the United States, sudden cardiac death is the most prevalent cause of on-duty fatalities among firefighters, constituting approximately 45% of such deaths. While personal factors may contribute to an individual's predisposition to coronary artery disease or other cardiovascular conditions, occupational exposures during firefighting can significantly heighten the risk. Historically, the fire service attributed poor firefighter physical condition as the primary cause of cardiovascular-related deaths. However, over the last two decades, studies and research have indicated that toxic gases encountered by fire service personnel substantially increase their risk for cardiovascular-related conditions and fatalities. Second is the increase in concern about cancer. Cancer risk in the U.S. fire service is underscored by recent studies indicating that firefighters may face an elevated risk of specific types of cancer and other chronic diseases due to their exposure on the fire ground. Furthermore, international studies broadly align with U.S. findings, suggesting elevated cancer rates among firefighters, albeit with some variations by cancer site. 
A retrospective longitudinal study in 2015 revealed that firefighters are at a heightened risk for specific types of cancer, including mesothelioma, lung cancer, and leukemia. The third and possibly most overlooked long-term hazard is mental stress. Similar to other emergency responders, firefighters may be exposed to traumatic scenes throughout their careers, rendering them more susceptible to certain mental health challenges, such as post-traumatic stress disorder and thoughts of suicide and related behaviors. In the United States, women in the occupations with the highest suicide rates are police officers and firefighters, registering a rate of 14 to 1 per 100,000. The cumulative effect of chronic stress over time manifests in symptoms impacting first responders, including anxiousness, irritability, nervousness, and memory and concentration problems that can lead to anxiety and depression. Prolonged mental stress can have enduring effects on the brain. A 2014 report from the National Fallen Firefighters Foundation discovered that a fire department is three times more likely to experience a suicide in a given year than a line-of-duty death. Think about that. They are three times more likely to experience a suicide in a given year than a line-of-duty death. The mental strain associated with firefighting can contribute to substance and alcohol abuse as coping mechanisms for stress. The mental stress of firefighting arises from various sources, both on and off duty. Firefighters' work schedules vary by district, with some stations adopting a 48-hour on and 48-hour off rotation, while others follow a 24-hour on and 72-hour off schedule. Missing significant life events, such as a child's first steps or a ballet recital due to work obligations, can profoundly impact first responders. Additionally, the stress of being on opposite shifts as a spouse or being away from family further compounds the mental toll of the job. Let's take a quick look about firefighting around the world. One significant distinction among fire services in various countries lies in the proportion of full-time versus volunteer or on-call firefighters. In the United States and the United Kingdom, extensive urban fire departments are predominantly staffed by full-time firefighters. In contrast, in Germany and Austria, Volunteers play a substantial role even in large fire departments, such as Berlin's, serving a population of 3.6 million. Regardless of the specific balance, smaller urban areas commonly feature a mix of full-time and volunteer on-call firefighters, termed a combination fire department. In Chile and Peru, all firefighters operate on a volunteer basis. Another area of divergence lies in the organizational structure of fire services. Some nations, such as the Czech Republic, Israel, and New Zealand, operate under a unified national fire service. Conversely, countries like Australia, the United Kingdom, and France structure their fire services according to regions or subnational states. In the United States, Austria, Germany, and Canada, fire departments are administered at the municipal level. Unusually, Singapore and several regions in Switzerland employ fire service conscription. In Germany, conscription may be invoked if a village lacks a functional fire service. Unconventional arrangements are also observed in Denmark, where most fire services are operated by private companies, and in France, where two fire services operate under the armed forces. Similarly, Monaco's National Fire Service is part of the military of Monaco and possesses an arsenal of sidearms for firefighters' use during civil defense operations. The heroism embodied by firefighters extends far beyond the realms of extinguishing flames and rescuing those in distress. These brave men and women, fueled by an unwavering commitment to safeguarding communities, exhibit resilience in the face of physical and mental challenges. From navigating hazardous environments to confronting the lasting impacts of their noble service, firefighters epitomize the hero heart. Their sacrifices often unseen but deeply felt. 
remind us that courage is not just a momentary act, but a continuous, selfless dedication to the well-being of others. In every blaze they confront and every life they touch, firefighters leave an indelible mark, proving that the true essence of heroism lies in the profound and enduring impact of their extraordinary deeds. I hope you'll hang on to listen to an audio clip. It's not very long. Um, it's an interview with a firefighter uh, by Miss Ling. Um, and it it's, a, it's just a, an insight into the emotional toll um, that the firefighting work can take. It's something I've never thought of uh, until I researched for this episode and also listened to this gentleman's interview. So I hope you listen. Why did you want to become a firefighter? I wanted to become a firefighter because I saw these guys as superheroes. I saw these guys as bigger than life. And it wasn't until I got to the job that I realized that we are just human. I've seen more in one day than probably someone has seen in their whole life. What kind of things do you see? I see faces of death. I see old people, young people, kids. Um, there are images that are hard to erase. It doesn't hit me until I get home that I can't fix someone's death. I can't fix someone who is broken. I can't fix these things in my head that make me feel like that I'm crazy. Who talks about that? The only time you see a firefighter crying is one of their co-workers die. Tell me about one of those times when you weren't able to save someone. I went on a call where a young girl in her early 20s was uh, partying on top of an apartment building. And she fell and tumbled and hit the sides of the walls and was killed. But she still had signs of a little bit of life in her. And I was a person doing compressions on her, but I didn't realize later on that this event was going to send me into a tailspin. Some of these calls just mess you up, and this call messed me up. I wanted to start drinking, so I'd mask these feelings and these emotions. And it didn't help. I would use prescription pills because I just wanted to get numb. You were diagnosed with post-traumatic stress injury, PTSI. Can you tell me about that? I'm healing from my injuries. I'm not going to be completely healed because I just went on a call last week that messed me up. But I get through them quicker because I'm not drinking. I'm eating cleaner and stair climbing. Tell me how you go from using alcohol as a means of escape to climbing stairs, a new ritual. Using drugs and alcohol, you get high. Doing stairs, I get high. I try to get in 10,000 steps a day, and mentally it's, it's a great escape because you're able to really get out of yourself. I began to realize that I'm trying to control things that I have no control over. I'm trying to control death. I can't control death. So I focus on trying not to think. I focus on just trying to get myself up the stairs and then I just focus on just being positive. I started organizing my co-workers to join in and do this climb as a tribute to the guys that were killed in 9-11. So now we start wearing gear. We start wearing our bunker pants and our firefighting boots and we wear our helmets. You get to a point where you just want to quit think about the people who cannot do this, the people that aren't here anymore. You know, the stairs are a metaphor to life. It's one step at a time. 
all of that excitement, energy, sweat, tears, it's uh, contained until you get all the way up to the top where you just like explode and just feel like the sky open up. It's a feeling that everyone should experience. And I think that a lot of people think that they can find that in a pill by the bottom of the glass. You don't have to go there. And then when you're able to really get that big breath of fresh air, you're breathing in life. It's amazing. I hope that little audio clip there just helps us all to remember um, that when some people go to work every day, um, they're fighting tremendous battles, um, both physical and mental, to, to do the job um, that keeps the rest of us safe. If you would like to read more about firefighting or firefighters, um, there's a book called Last Man Down, A Firefighter Story of Survival and Escape from the World Trade Center, written by Richard Picciotto and Daniel Paisner. Um, that was written in 2003. Uh, there's a memoir that I really liked called Smoke Jumper, a memoir by one of America's most select airborne firefighters that was written by Jason Ramos and Julian Smith in 2015. And for kids, there are literally so many books um, uh, about firefighters or fire engines or firehouse dogs. Um, there's just a lot to choose from. But I picked the one titled Firefighters Are Heroes, a children's storybook about firefighters. And that was written by Sunny May, M-A-I, in 2022. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Our quote of the day is kind of a tongue-in-cheek funny quote from one of my favorite authors, Jodi Picoult. She says, quote, when I was little, I bragged about my firefighting father. My father would go to heaven because if he went to hell, he would put out all the fires, end quote. I hope you enjoyed today's episode and please join us for the next episode, which will feature Krista McAuliffe. We hope to see you then. Thank you for giving your time to listen to this episode of Mindset Matters, The Courage to Continue. You are of value. You are loved. You are not alone. If you are struggling with thoughts of suicide, help is available. Dial 988 24 hours a day for free confidential support. If you are not in crisis but need support, please feel free to reach out to me at the email Mindset Matters Podcast numeral one at gmail.com. Again, that's all lowercase mindset matters podcast, the numeral one at gmail.com. Remember to change your day by what you think and say. We'll see you next time.